boom. This album right here. In the Court of the Crimson King. Really good. We're going to be reviewing it today. Should be fun. So when I first freaking listened to this album, it blew my mind. Actually, no. Let's reel it back a little bit. When I first listened to this album, what was it? I listened to, uh, I listened to, uh, in the court. I, I listened to the title track. <laughs> what did I think? It was a snooze fest. I did not, didn't stick with me. I don't know what it was. It, well, I only listened to, like, the middle part where it was like, oh, and I started hearing reviews about it. I was like, oh, it's so good. You can see right there, I have the, um, the uh, 50th edition or whatever right there I started hearing reviews I was like oh this is so good it's amazing and I didn't, I didn't know what they were talking about I thought I was like dumb either that or everyone else was out of their mind so I went ahead and I listened to schizoid man <laughs> oh my gosh the riff dude that riff changed everything I knew as soon as I heard that riff I needed to get the album and so I did um, so here it is and then I listened to the whole thing and it was amazing so you really kind of have to get into the mindset of listening to an album all the way through in order to fully appreciate something like this is it their best I beg to differ oh, oh god oh god I feel like everyone thinks like, oh, it's this album and only this album. No, no, no. There's some really good other material. So, just some background info. The five main members right on the back right here. You got Peter Giles. You got uh, you got Peter Sinfield, Michael Giles. There we go. There we go. Uh, Greg Lake, Fripp, and Ian McDonald. So, Ian McDonald, sax player. He plays a little bit of flute. Robert Fripp, the main guitarist, you got Greg Lake, bass player and the singer, Peter Sinfield, the lyricist and imagery, whatever that is, and then you got Michael Giles, the good old drummer. So, again, this album was released 1969, so typical 18 year old thinks. 1969, holy shit, that is older than fuck. But, it's not that old, it's, it's, it's like... 1969 that's that's a golden age of music right and I mean the Beatles were by the breakups and then you had this so everything was kind of reforming and just <laughs> yeah five tracks on this um, I think it's like 43 minutes 49 something like that T typical album length um, and like I said there's five tracks the longest being like I think it might be Moonchild I don't know but We'll talk about the tracks in a minute. All right, so as you can tell, the lighting's different. I have a different shirt. You're gonna see a red shirt and a hoodie in this video because I don't know what it is. My videos keep getting corrupted and so it's just whatever. We're gonna start off by talking about 21st Century Schizoid Man. Now, what do I have to say about 21st Century Schizoid Man? It is great. It, a must listen, like, come on. But, what do I like about the song? I really like the lyrics. Peter Sinfield really shining with his lyrics here. Uh, Anti-war, and just very, very creative with the way he talks about war and how it's not good. Essentially an anti-war song, but I also think the musical component of it really helps convey the message here and that's from the main riff that's just like uh, super heavy super like crushing really while also being eclectic later on with the sort of -da -ba -ba -da -na 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 -na, the craziness um, it just kind of puts you in that rush mode that war mode and it's just it works really well. The band is on fire. I mean, they're all playing incredibly well. The synergy's up. Michael Giles is amazing on this track. The drumming, maybe the production could use a little bit of work, but the drumming is incredible. The fills, it really adds that whole war layer to the song. And of course, you have Greg Lake's vocals. 
kind of have that filter that makes it kind of pierce through you like glass. It's just, oh, it just, it works really well with the song. The solo that Fripp plays is really good. It's mysterious. It kind of puts you in a trance, but it's also melodic. It doesn't lose its melodic purpose in the song, so it just works. And then, of course, you have Ian McDonald's crazy sax playing that just goes all over the place and is demented. So you have that. And then finally, you have the quick sort of stop-start point of the song. And that point is just crazy. crazy. Like, like, like the, the song is a whole journey, which is why I think it's very strong. It's probably my second favorite song on the album, followed by what we'll talk about later, but it is an incredible song. It's a must listen in their discography, and you should definitely check it out. So next we have Moon, or not Moon Child, we have. So next, I talk to the wind. Complete opposite of Schizoid Band. It goes from like brash, aggressive war to like kind of depressing. But the song doesn't itself sound depressing. The lyrics are kind of like saddening a little bit, but it still sounds really pretty. I remember the first time I had listened to this, it actually made me feel like I was laying on a cloud. Like, it's just super airy, super light. The fluttery uh, flu playing by Ian McDonald is just super fluttery, nice, melodic, fluid. It works with the track. It just puts you in, like, a chill vibe sort of deal. Really cool. Again, like I said, it's the opposite of Schizoid Man, and you kind of need that afterwards. You're like, okay, that was nice, but let me, let's me let reel it back a little bit. And I think that's another reason why I think the pacing in the first half is incredible, because you go from aggressive, and then it kind of reels you back in. It says, okay, let's slow down a little bit, up until you get to Epitaph. The lyrics, Sinfield coming in clutch, they're pretty good. They're kind of saddening. The drumming is perfect. It's not over the top, but it's also creative. It just works with the song. Ian McDonald versus Mel Collins. I think it might be a little too early because Mel Collins isn't even in the band yet, but I, I think I prefer Ian just because, I mean, in songs like this, it just sounds a lot more melodic. And I feel like with Mel Collins, he can, kind of plays more sporadically, which in some scenarios works, right? In some scenarios, it's perfectly fine, but it, you kind of miss that whole like fluttery, melodic playing that's just fluid and just works well with Ian McDonald. And I also think Ian McDonald, he played a crucial role in just making this album and arranging it. So I Talk to the Wind, definite recommend. It might not be as good as like Schizoid Man, but it is still very, very good. It's, it's a must listen Crimson song. Next, on to Epitaph. Next, we have probably the best moment of the album. Epitaph. 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 Oh boy, Epitaph. It's probably top five Crimson songs. It is a definite listen. Just talking about it is making me get goosebumps right now, but Epitaph. The pinnacle of just Mellotron amazing arrangement. Everything about this album is stunning. Greg's Lake's vocals that just soar. Oh my god, it's so good. It's so good. The build up, how you go from like quiet and then it slowly builds up, and then Greg Lake comes in the final part of the album and it's just boom. It literally feels like you're going into the sky and it's just etherealness but it also has a really nice melancholic tone to it peter sinfield's probably best lyrics ever at least with king crimson but ever 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 there are, are amazing the whole atmosphere the whole vibe you get from the song is undescribable it's i th it's pretty lengthy but it doesn't feel lengthy that's how you know a strong is really good when it's like 10 minutes and it feels like five or something but this song is incredible 
everything comes together it just works and it's amazing it is the highest point of this album in my opinion uh, next to like schizoid man but it kind of ends like i said it ends the first half of the album which i think is incredibly strong but i think epitaph is amazing it is like just so good it is so good i don't know what else to say about it the acoustic guitar playing it really cool i wish that they started playing acoustic because i know i've heard i haven't heard any of the 80s stuff but i've heard that once the wet and era kind of ends they kind of don't bring back any more acoustic playing and i think that's something that's lost with these first early crim albums check it out next Next track is probably the most controversial track on the album, Moonchild. What is my take on Moonchild? I used to not have tolerance for these kind of songs where meanders, improv, just kind of a long time, like a long song. So I think I have a good amount of tolerance for this, but even so, something about Moonchild, it just doesn't click. It's pretty long. I think it's 12 minutes. It's it's rather lengthy. The beginning portion of it is nice with Greg Lake's vocals, but after that, it kind of starts going into just random. I can, I mean, I can appreciate the sounds and the soundscape, but it, to me, it doesn't really have any purpose, any sort of aim or goal. It just kind of goes on. Uh, the drumming, it's still there. It just kind of comes and goes. I just think it's too long. It overall just breaks the pace that it built up with Schizoid Man, Talk to the Wind, and Epitaph. It kind of just ruins that. I don't think it's terrible. Or on a 1 of 10, with 5 being average, I think it would be about a 5 or a 4. It's, it's not on par with the rest of the material. And it just overall ruins the flow, for me, of the album. It's just too much. Too much. Moonchild. Don't, don't not recommend, but I don't recommend either. Woo! The last song of the album. The title track, In the Court of the Crimson King. Right here, I'm pointing like this is the title of it, but just picking his nose, whatever. The song is pretty long. I don't think it's as long as Moonchild, but it is pretty lengthy. What do I think about In the Court of the Crimson King? I think it's a really good album closer. It helps bring this whole incredibleness to a close, and it kind of reels you back in from Moonchild. Moonchild kind of for me at least, it doesn't really work. It takes me out of the whole album experience, which is why I don't think this is their best album. It just doesn't have that consistency factor, but you do have the title track to kind of bring things back together, and I think it works. If I were to describe this song in one word, it would be magical. This thing is incredible. The Mellotron is insane. It just makes you feel like you're ascending into the sky. Peter Sinfield's lyrics, I mean, they bring up a witch, the Crimson King himself, a puppeteer, it's all these magical figures, it's crazy, the whole song is just one, it's almost, it's like psychedelic, but not really, it's not psychedelic sounding, but I think the lyrical content does qualify as psychedelic, because, I mean, we don't know who these figures are, they could be metaphorical, heck, this whole album has a chock full of things in the lyrics that just make you think. And that's one of the beautiful things. So, do I recommend the title track? Of course I do. It's great. I There's like several different acts. I mean, you have the acoustic guitar bit that comes later on. You have this flute quiet bit. And then you have the fake ending that just kind of boom! It just comes up out of nowhere. It's all crazy. So, it is a definite listen. It doesn't really sound like anything else out there. So, it's a definite listen. And it definitely helps bring the album to a close, and it just works well.
So the overall takeaway of this, would I recommend getting this album? Absolutely. Of course, you should. This is a must listen. Like, there is no doubt about it in my mind. You have to. Like, go now. Go. I'm just kidding, but... Please. It is very worth it. I mean, it's on YouTube. It's like on Spotify. It's on everything, really. I know some other King Crimson albums, there's like issues with it being not in the Japanese Spotify or I don't know. They're just some random stuff. But this is everywhere. And even go get yourself the physical copy. I don't know. I have physical copies and I think they sound great. Or if you're not about that, if you just want to be digital, get the digital version. It's, it's a must. I think you should most definitely listen to this. Pick this up. Because it is great. I will say, I think there is better in their lineup. But this is probably their most accessible. I think this is their most accessible album. Their next album is very similar to this. So if you like this, you might want to check that out. But other than that, this is a great album. Of course, I would recommend listening to it. I mean, come on, you thought I wasn't? You thought I wasn't going to say yes? I mean, come on now. But in all seriousness, pick this up. It's very good.